Hey guys, welcome back to React Router Series. In this tutorial, we're going to apply Material UI to a project. So the very first thing I did is actually updated image URLs in stored JSON file because some of the images here were actually as big as one megabyte. So I had to update those. The other thing I'll do is I'll go to index.js file and I'm going to remove React DOM from there. Instead, I'll have a named import of render method and we're going to call it directly. The other thing I'll change is an index.js file in errors folder. Instead of having an import statement with an export statement, we can just have one export. We can export default the not found component from 404. And in that case, we don't need to have the old export statement below. So we can remove that. The other thing I'll do is I'll go back to the terminal. And if you do cat package JSON, you're going to see that some of the dependencies here are actually outdated. For example, React has been updated to 16.4.0 since we last did a tutorial in this series. So one thing you could do is you could obviously go to your editor and you can go to package JSON file and you could basically update these dependencies manually. But in some projects, you might have as many as dozens of dependencies and updating them manually obviously is pretty cumbersome. So the alternative to that would be to go to the terminal and one thing you could do is you could do yarn upgrade with the latest flag and what the latest flag is going to do is it's actually going to update your dependencies in package json file so it's going to overwrite the existing versions with the latest versions based on whatever you have specified based on the caret symbol so i'm going to let the command finish and once it does we can do package json again and you're going to see that some of the dependencies have been updated successfully so finally, I'm going to do yarn start, and this is going to start the project so we can see where we are at. Okay, so I'm going to maximize the window, and this is basically what it is, right? So we have our writers, and then we can basically see the information about the writers themselves, as well as the books that they have written. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're actually going to apply Material UI, like I said. So the next thing I'll do is I'll actually stop the server for a moment, and then I'll do yarn add material ui slash core and the reason that we have to use that syntax well if you go back to the browser for a second i am here on the material ui documentation page so this is the uh, the home page of material ui if you click on get started you're going to see the instructions as to how to install it previously we used the next flag in order to install the beta version but because material ui has been updated to version one in may actually last month we now need to reference material UI slash core. So at present time, material UI v1 as well as the version 020 both exist in the master branch. So in order to differentiate between the two, the newer version of material UI has actually been moved to the core subfolder. So we need to reference that in order to get the latest version of material UI. And then besides the framework itself or the uh, library itself, I should say, we're also going to add another dependencies. It's going to be material um, UI slash icons. We're going to add the material icons so we could use them in our project as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to app.js component. So the very first thing I'd like to do in this project is I'd like to add a drawer. So let's go to documentation for a second. I'm going to click on component demos. Let's go to drawers. And the one that I'm interested in for the time being is the last one. So as you're going to see, it's known as responsive drawer. So the advantage of it is that it's actually responsive on mobile desktop and as well as the other devices. So if I go to, let's say, a mobile device, let's see, an iPhone, as you're going to see, the drawer changes. So now we have this hamburger menu, which we can click on and we can see all of the items. But if I go back to the desktop mode, you're going to see that the hamburger menu disappears and you're going to see all of the links on the left lane. So this is the code we're going to use. Let's click on the source and let's see what it basically looks like. So we have a render method. So it's a class based component. We're going to need to keep track of this property called mobile open. So what I'll do is I'll actually copy this div all of this markup let's go back to our project instead of putting it in app.js what i'd like to do is i'd like to actually create a dedicated component so i'll create a new file let's call it layout and in layout i'm going to create an index.js let's import react from react as we always do and we also have to export default let's have a class it's going to extend component not composition component and we're going to have a render method. We're going to need to return something. We're going to return a div. 
let's fix the indentation and we're gonna need to import component as well so for now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to make this thing work so we're gonna need to have a bunch of imports so the imports are gonna come from a chill UI core and we're gonna have app bar let's see toolbar I'm basically just looking at the different elements or components we're using and I'm basically putting them in let's have an icon button let's have typography I have a hidden component here let's have a drawer it looks like that's pretty much it for the time being besides we're gonna need to go back and we also have a drawer element or a drawer constant so let me copy those two things back in here what I'll do is I'll paste them in the drawer also have a divider element, which I'm not sure if we're actually going to use, but let's just keep it there for the time being. And the two variables here actually come from the documentation. We can go to get up and grab them from there, but for now, I think I'm just going to delete them. Let's just put some, uh, some dummy content. The theme object, I don't think we're going to need it. This is actually used for the uh, direction, right or left. In this case, it's not relevant at all. And then the mobile open property, well, I'm gonna grab it from the state in here. So let's have a const mobile open. This is gonna come from the state. Of course, that's gonna need to have to be added to our component as well. So we're gonna need to add some state. So let's go back to the editor. Okay, here, so we're gonna need to add the property on the state. By default, it's gonna be false. And then we also need to have handle drawer toggle method, which is basically used when we click on the hamburger menu button. Actually, the theme here, I'm gonna remove it. We have our classes and let's see if this actually works. So we'll go back to the browser. This is the project. We're gonna need to start the server again because I had to stop it so we could install the dependencies. So I'll do yarn start. And let's see, I think something's gonna break. Actually, no, nothing broke but that's because we're not actually using the layout component that's why okay so we'll go back to app.js i'm going to remove this unordered list we're not going to have any links in app component but instead um, we're actually going to use the layout component instead so i'll remove the fragment but i'll put in the layout okay so we're going to have a layout component and i'm actually going to pass in children inside of it so by that i mean Whatever the layout component needs to render is going to be passed to it as the children. So it's going to be passed between the two tags. So having said that, I'm going to also need to go back and in this main, um, between the main tags, instead of having a typography element, I'm actually just going to say children. So the children property is something that comes from this props and it's going to contain whatever we pass between the tags, like I said, it's gonna be the switch element basically. And I think we're also gonna to need to pass the writers as a prop, and this is so that we can actually loop through them and we can display them inside the drawer as the list items. So we're gonna do that in a second, but for now what I'll do is I'll actually import layout component from layout like that and I'm going to remove the link component from react router DOM because we're not going to need it in this component and having done that let's go back and writes is not defined in app.js that's because it should be writers not writes menu icon is not defined okay so we did actually import oops we did actually import material UI icons library but we forgot to import menu component from that library so let's do exactly that let's grab menu from material UI icons and let's search for menu icon I'm gonna change it to menu because menu is actually the name that's used for that specific component so that's gonna give us the hamburger menu icon okay classes toolbar is not defined that's because we don't have any styling so we'll go back to this example in the documentation we forgot to grab the styles I'm gonna go here and grab all of these styles from there and I'll paste them in in this index.js file and let's see going back to the docs I'm also gonna need to grab with styles HOC helper so I'll paste it over here and we're gonna need to actually use it so instead of doing an export default I'll have a class let's call it component and We'll have an export default below. We'll have with styles. I'm going to pass in the styles and then I'll pass in 
the app component. Actually, we're gonna need to call it layout because we're in layout file, okay. I'll call it layout instead of app, sorry about that. This would be class layout. Okay, so this should be fine. Now we should have styles. I'll go back in here, the site can be reached. Okay, so we did actually get something. It's not very beautiful just yet, but that's already something. So let's see, the problem we're having is we have a height of 430. I'm gonna remove that, first of all. And this is what it's gonna look like. Now, the other thing is because we have this margin around um, basically around the elements over here, that's because we need to apply what's known as CSS baseline. So I'll put in a fragment here. Let's have a fragment. And this fragment will need to go at the very bottom after the div. Let's have the fragment and I'll fix the indentation in just a second. Okay, we're gonna to need to import that fragment. The reason I want to pull in the fragment is because I also want to add CSS baseline, like I said. So CSS baseline, what it basically allows us to do is if you guys are interested, I'll show you real quick. We have the CSS baseline. What it does is it basically applies normalizations to, um, to your project so that your project is gonna look pretty much the same on different browsers. Because as you probably know, different browsers will try to apply different layouts to different styles, like adding, for example, margin around divs, um, for example, on the body element, as we can see here, the body has margin eight by default. So these are the user agent style sheet styles. These come from Chrome itself. So it's gonna apply a bunch of styles that are unnecessary and they're not gonna be the same depending on the browser. So what we can do is we can apply this CSS baseline component. It's gonna apply the base set of styles across all of the browsers so that the project is gonna pretty much look the same regardless of what browser we're using. Okay, so I'm gonna apply that CSS layout component. Let's put it in here and let's save that and let's see if it kills the margin and it looks like it does. The other thing I'll do is in documentation, I'm actually gonna go back and in this drawers section, we also have a clipped drawer. So a clipped drawer basically has the app bar over the, over the left pane itself, over the list of links. So what we can do here is we can basically apply the Z index. That's gonna be one of the styles we're gonna need. But in our app drawer, we're also gonna need to remove all of the other styles. Things like position absolute, this can actually be applied on the drawer itself, on the, in the app bar component itself. So we'll do position, let's have absolute. So that way we can remove this style. I'm also gonna remove margin left. And then actually this calculation we don't need anymore because I want the app bar to take full width. So we'll just apply the Z index. And let's see if that fixes it. So going back to our project, here we go. We have our responsive drawer at the top and we have a left pane on the left taking exactly 240 pixels. Okay, that's fine for now. And then instead of saying responsive drawer, I'm actually gonna put in my own title. Let's say writer's blog. So let's see how that looks like. This is what it's gonna be like, okay? So now we have the drawer. And the thing is, if we go to a mobile mode, let's see what it's gonna look like on mobile. For example, things like iPhone 6, 7, and 8. If I open the hamburger menu, you're gonna see this hello pop up. But the thing is, we also have a weird space above, which I don't really like. So one thing we could do is in our drawer component, we can make this div conditional. So what I'll say is this, um, div is actually necessary on desktop devices because we're gonna need to make sure that we have a, a space above the hello element so that we have enough space so that the app bar above can actually show up. Otherwise, the hello element is gonna be hidden behind it. So if we actually move it, that's gonna screw things up because you're not gonna be able to see the hello element, right? But at the same time, we're gonna need to make sure that it doesn't show up on mobile devices. So we can actually copy this element known as hidden. Um, in this case, we actually need this one. Okay, so the hidden element allows you to show or hide elements conditionally. It's actually a component in Material UI. So by applying that element, we're saying we don't want to show that div on any small or extra small devices. So this is what small down means. So anything smaller than small is not gonna have the div inside of it. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. If we refresh the project, I go back to a mobile device. Now we don't see that 
uh, spacing at the top. We don't see that div element with the spacing showing up.